Right, let's simplify this. 3 plus root 5 times 3 minus root 5. Now the quick way is to recognise the shape of this, recognise what sort of thing it is. Um, and it's the difference of two squares. You've got 3 plus root 5 times 3 minus root 5, so a plus b times a minus b. And when you multiply that out, you get the first thing squared, so we're going to get 3 squared minus the second thing squared, so minus root 5 squared. This is a really useful thing for you to know and be able to do. So 3 squared is obviously 9, root 5 squared is 5, 9 minus 5 is 4. Okay, that's the quick way. The long way, or I suppose the longer way, still not that long, is just to write it out longhand and do it term by term. And that way you get four terms, and we'll see that two of them will cancel out. So 3 times 3 is 9, uh, 3 times root 5, and remember it's minus root 5, so that gives you minus 3 root 5 for that term. Uh, then you've got root 5 times 3, which is plus 3 root 5, and hopefully you can see that those two are going to cancel. And then finally 5 times minus root 5 is minus root 5 squared. And when we write this out, we've got the 9. Um, those bits there, they're equal and opposite, so they're going to cancel out. So the 9 from the start, we get nothing from those two, minus, and root 5 squared is 5. So 9 minus 5 again, thankfully, is 4. Right, part A, find the value of 8 to the power 4 thirds. Can't see the power there, so I'll rewrite it for you. Now the key thing when the power is a fraction is what each part means. The top is the power that you have to raise it to. So we're going to have to raise it to the power 4. The bottom is the root that you're going to take. So in this case, it's the cube root. Now, you should always do the root first, because that's going to be the simplest way. Um, so take the cube root of 8, and then we're going to do that to the power 4. And of course, the cube root of 8 is 2. So 2 to the power 4 gives me my answer of 16. Part B, let's look at this one. 15x to the power 4 thirds divided by 3x. We need to simplify that. Um, now we look at the numbers and the letters separately. Obviously on top we've got 15 and the bottom we've got a 3. These can cancel by a factor of 3 to give me 5 over 1. So I'll just write that as 5. And next I need to consider x to the power 4 thirds divided by x. Um, you could write this as an intermediate step. I'm just going to do my working at the side. x to the power 4 thirds, if you divide by x, you're dividing, don't forget, by x to the power 1. And when you divide, you subtract the powers. So it's x to the power 4 thirds minus 1, which is, of course, 1 third. So x to the power 1 third goes into there, and my answer is 5x to the power 1 third. And that's the simplest form. Right, there are two parts to this question. The first one asks us to express the square root of 108 as uh, a root 3, so something root 3. We need to split 108 into product of two factors, ideally one of which will be a square number, and the other of which will be 3. And in this case, it's 36 times 3. So we can split that into two square roots, root 36 times root 3, which is, of course, 6 root 3. So that's your answer to part A. Part B, express 2 minus root 3 squared in the form b plus c root 3. Basically, we have to multiply out the brackets and tidy it up. Now, you might not need this middle step. I'll put it in just for those of you who need it. Um, we're going to multiply each thing in the first bracket by each thing in the second. So 2 times 2 gives me 2 squared. 2 times the minus root 3 is minus 2 root 3. Then the other minus root 3 times the other 2 gives me another minus 2 root 3. And finally, minus root 3 times minus root 3 gives me plus root 3 squared. Now, you could write that straight away as 3, but if you're not sure, write it as root 3 squared. So tidying up, 2 squared is 4. Combine those two middle terms to give you minus 4 root 3. And root 3 squared is, of course, 3. So the 4 and the 3 make 7. 7 minus 4 root 3, and that's my answer. OK, in this question, we have to solve these two equations simultaneously, one linear, one quadratic. So as usual, we'll start by labelling the equations. And typically with quadratic, you want to substitute one into another. And so you're looking to rearrange one of them into the form y equals. And this one's already in that form. 
So conveniently, we can simply substitute equation 1 straight into equation 2. So that means everywhere we see a y, we replace it with x minus 2. So y squared from here simply becomes x minus 2 squared. Don't forget the brackets, otherwise it's meaningless. Um, and then we still have the plus x squared and equals 10. And now basically we have quadratic and we can solve it to find the x values. So we'll need to multiply out the brackets, x squared minus 4x plus 4, and then we've got the other x squared and it equals 10. So we'll go ahead and solve this to find x, uh, gather the x squareds together, uh, we've got minus 4x still, um, we've got the plus 4 but there's a, mi there's a 10 over there, so we'll subtract that so that everything's on the same side, we have minus 6 equals 0. Uh, whenever you see a quadratic with all even coefficients, that means you can definitely, at the very least, divide them all by 2. And if we do that here, it makes it a lot simpler, and it's going to be hopefully fairly straightforward to factorise. x squared, so we're going to have an x at the beginning of each bracket. And, well, the plus c term is negative. That means the two numbers in my brackets will be different signs. They have to multiply to give minus 3. Uh, the middle term is negative, so the negative one must be bigger. So it can only be plus 1 and minus 3. So I've, uh, I've factorised, I just need to write down my x values. So they'll be minus 1 and 3. So I'm halfway there, and I simply need to get the y values. And I can substitute back into either of my equations, but it would be foolish to do it into equation 2, when equation 1 is so beautiful and simple. So I'll substitute into equation 1. So taking my first x value when x equals minus 1, put that into equation 1, it tells you that y is equal to the x value take away 2. So in this case y equals minus 1 take away 2. And minus 1 take away 2 is minus 3. And then when x equals 3, put that into equation 1, it tells you that y is 3 take away 2. Of course that's 1. And we finished. You've solved it. Um, you could give them as coordinate pairs. I tend to write it like this. Um, x equals minus 1, y equals minus 3, or x equals 3, y equals 1. Either way, we're done. Right, in this question we're given two equations involving x and y, and by eliminating y from these we are asked to show that x squared plus 4x minus 8 equals 0. So if we start by labeling the equation so we know what we're talking about. To eliminate y, you need to substitute y equals from one equation into the other. And if you look at that, equation 1 is already in that form. So we can go ahead straight away and substitute equation 1 into equation 2. So we write out equation 2, but everywhere we should have y, we replace it with x minus 4. So 2x squared doesn't change, and then the x times y is simply x times x minus 4. And of course that still equals 8, because I'm putting it in equation 2. And this is a quadratic with x in. I'm asked to show a quadratic with x in, so I just have to carefully rearrange that. Firstly by expanding the brackets, um, and then simply by rearranging. So 2x squared minus x squared is 1x squared, 4x stays there, and you move the, x, the 8 over from the other side to get minus 8 equals 0. There we go, we've shown what we were asked to show. Now, part B, hence or otherwise solve the simultaneous equations. Okay, now when you see hence, that means using what you've just done. So using, in this case, what we've done in part A. And we can see that these equations are, well, they're the same two equations that we've just used to get the quadratic in X. Um, so that makes our job a lot easier. Also, before you start, note this. Give your answers in the form A plus or minus B root 3. If the answers are in third form, it means it won't factorise, so don't waste time trying to do that. Uh, we can use the formula or complete the square. So, uh, let's look at the equations we've got. We call these ones 1 and 2 before, so let's keep them as that. That one we'll call equation 3. So I've already eliminated y, so the first thing to do is to solve equation 3 to find my two x values. Um, so I'm going to use the formula. x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So minus b is minus 4, b squared is 2, 4 times a, which is 1, times minus 8 for c, all divided by 2a, so divided by 2 times 1. 
Um, so that's minus 4 plus or minus the square root. If we tidy this up, 4 squared is 16. Minus 4 times 1 times minus 8 is plus 32. Get the signs right. And that's divided by 2. Um, tidy up the third part. So minus 4 stays the same. That is the square root of 48. Again, uh, still divided by 2. And I want to express 48 as the product of one square number and some other number. And it happens to be 16 times 3, which will let me bring the 16 as a square root and make that into a 4. So minus 4 plus or minus 4 root 3 divided by 2. If I divide both terms by 2, both the 4s turn to 2s, and those are my x values. Minus 2 plus or minus 2 root 3. So I'm halfway to my solution. I've done the hard part, in fact. I've got the x values. I now need to find the y values, and I'm going to substitute in equation 1. You could substitute in equation 2 if you like, but it's just nasty. So we'll do it the easy way. So when x is minus 2 plus 2 root 3, y, which is x minus 4, will be that minus 4. So that becomes minus 6 plus 2 root 3. And similarly, when x is minus 2 minus 2 root 3, y will be that, so minus 2 minus 2 root 3, take away 4, which is minus 6 minus 2 root 3. So those are my two y values to go with my two x values, and we've solved the question.